Yeah, Matt Goss, we spoke to Alan Davis about he ch- how he changed his season, the last two seasons when he started the season. Last year he started very late, so he could be peaking at the end of the year for the Commonwealth Games and the World Road Championships. This year we spoke the other day about you starting a little bit earlier. I guess the proof's in the pudding. You're flying here at Tour Down Under. Is it something that, as a professional cyclist, a lot of riders like to actually you have the same routine all the time leading into a season? How hard is it to change that? Um, and how, you know, how do you feel it's working for you now by starting earlier this year? Yeah, it's, uh, it's something that takes a lot of thought, I guess, and uh, it's not a decision you can make by yourself. It has to be through the team and uh, be something that suits your race program, I guess. You know, my race program uh, requires me to be going well for the early season, for March, April, for the Classics. So to start a little bit earlier here is uh, sometimes a good thing. It's good for the confidence so as you can go into those races knowing you've got good form. And uh, you know, it, it's great because it brings results early in the season, which takes the pressure off a little bit as well sometimes. But, uh, you know, it's it's... Not something that takes a lot of change, it just means you start training probably three, four weeks earlier than what would usually be happening and uh, sometimes it can be a bit of a, a bit of a sacrifice on that, the end of your season but that's where you've got to make those decisions and really really have breaks at the right times and have proper breaks during the season and uh, make sure you recover well and you come back fresh each time. Have you got goals for the end of 2011, like major races that you really want to try and target and hang on for or is it all about the start of the year? No, certainly this year is very, very important, the end of season. Uh, we have the World Championships in Copenhagen, which is on a fairly flat circuit. So it's a circuit that suits me quite well, and uh, it's a circuit where I can you know, potentially have a really good result there. So it's going to be very important where I take my breaks through the season and uh, make sure that when I take them there, they're real, really good breaks and they really recover well. And uh, you, know, you just have to really look after yourself, and hopefully that means that I can come up early in the season, sometime during the season again, and then at the end of the season, which is quite difficult to do sometimes. But you know, if all goes well, we can uh, plan on a good year. Well, I guess experience would play a big factor in knowing what you d- can do through a year and how many times you can come up and down through it. You've had a few years now as a professional. You feel like you can nail it this year and actually hit those peaks when you need to? Yeah, hopefully. You know, This is my fifth year pro, so I'm starting to learn more and more and more. And uh, Each year you use that to make uh, the year better. And uh, Hopefully this year I can put it together and have three really good peaks during the season, which is probably not easy, but you, know, you don't want to sacrifice and have three average peaks. You want to have three really good ones. So hopefully I can put this together well and uh, hopefully I can have some success here and be good at the end of the season as well and you know, have a really good mid-season as well. It's, it's, it's trying to have uh, the cake and eat it too, I guess, but you know, uh, hopefully we can, we can pull it off. Now, in the uh, the off season itself, did you do anything different? You know, when you weren't riding the bike itself, which Albie said uh, that you know he was doing some boxing training, so that's a little bit of a heads up for you if you do get any uh, elbows or headbutts out in it. Just, just be careful out there. He has been boxing. Been <laughs> yeah, anything? no, I haven't been boxing. Maybe I should be in case these sprints get a bit rough. But um, I actually did boxing uh, the year before last. But um, this year, not so much different. Just more time on the bike and uh, really preparing well and uh, making sure everything's working well before we uh, get back into the hard training. Well, when, when you weren't on the bike at all, what sort of holidays, or you go fishing, or what, would you, what did you do in the offie? Golf, actually. Got right into the golf. Was playing. You know, uh, I think the first two weeks I was back, I played about ten rounds. So uh, I spent a fair bit of time on the course, and still actually doing that uh, most of the time while I'm back in Australia. So it's not really that strenuous, I guess, on the on the body. But um, you know, it's something that gets you out of the house and gets you walking around for a while. Well, I know I was one, and most cyclists are, are terrible walkers because you do ride so much. How did you go on the first couple of rounds you played? It would have been hard getting around the 18 holes. Yeah, I know sometimes the cart seems a little bit too uh, appealing and you jump in that, but no, nah, it was all right. Get around slowly. No esky in the back of the cart, though. <laughs> Maybe one or two beers the first few rounds, but no, we certainly cut them out later in the, later in the off-season. Oh, look, starting the off seasons obviously worked very well for you so far. You're flying here at the Jaco Bay Classic uh, last week, then the, the National Championships, and of course, two at another. So good luck for the, the rest of the year, and let's hope you hit those three peaks. Yeah, thanks. It's been a great start. Hopefully, it's a sign of a good year to come. Cheers. Hey, Matt Goss, third on the stage. I know you would have liked to have won that, but still got some time bonuses there. So a little bit closer towards Cameron Meyer. Big day tomorrow. It's a short, criterium style stage, but you're in the box seat even though you're sitting second. Yeah, certainly. It's not, uh, you know, I want to be a bit closer than eight seconds before tomorrow. Unfortunately, got only managed third today. It would have been nice to come away with the win and uh, the 10 seconds bonus. But at the same time, we're closer to what we were th- than what we were this morning. So we'll go into tomorrow and race aggressively and try and pick up some bonus seconds in the win. But traditionally, uh, a little group, group breakaway group has gone away on that stage tomorrow. You guys don't really need that, though. You need those uh, intermediate sprints, don't you? No, I don't think there'll be a breakaway getting too far tomorrow. We'll try and keep it pretty controlled. Uh, the bonus sprints are pretty important. There is 10 seconds on the line if you win, but uh, you know, I'd rather pick up some seconds a little bit earlier, I reckon. But we'll have to sit down and talk about it and suss out the best option. Well, the stage win and those 10 seconds time bonus that you need, you can actually contest against guys that did take it easy today, that weren't racing for the overall, those other pure sprinters that tried to take it as easy as possible today to save tomorrow. 
you really feel like you've got the, the goods to, to be the best sprinter tomorrow to pick up those 10 seconds, that'll guarantee you the win. Yeah, it's certainly true. There's going to be guys there that have taken it a bit easier than I did today. But uh, you know, at the same time, I felt pretty comfortable today. I don't think I really, really killed myself. Had the team around me and really looked after me. So tomorrow's going to be hard. It's going to be a tricky day. But hopefully we can get those 10 seconds or at least pick up the bonus seconds and some seconds in the finish and get enough to get me across the line. OK, Mark Renshaw and Bernard Eisel, you guys are part of the super lead-out train for Mark Cavendish and Andre Greipel in the past as well. But... You guys train just as hard as Mark Cavendish does, but he gets all the glory. What's it like to be a part of that lead-out train, and, and how do you motivate yourself to train as hard as you know the guys that do win the races? Yes, it's really hard for me to motivate myself because uh, you know Mark Cavendish gets all the glory, Bernie Eisel gets all the chicks, and you know I, I don't get anything. I, I get paid pretty average. <laughs> no, no, it's at the end of the day, I've still got ambitions to win myself, so. Uh, hopefully I get a win every now and then and uh, cycling's a really a team sport so it's uh, whenever Cav wins or any, anyone else in the team it's still a, a reflection on the team and, uh, and that's the motivation that I use. Well Bernie, that is, cycling is very unique in the fact that it is a team sport but it is only one winner whether it's the Tour de France overall or if it's stage victories. You know, you were a sprinter, you know, one of the gun sprinters earlier on in your career but now you're part of this integral lead out train that works for Mark Cavendish. Just explain a little bit more about the intricacies of the sport and, and this team sport that only has individual winners. Yeah, first of all, I have to say, you say probably uh, we train, we train the same as he does. Probably we actually train more than Mark Cavendish does because he just got more talent. <laughs> and now, uh, yeah, it's a team sport. And I, I made my decision a couple of years ago. I tried to to win stages in the tour. I was always up there, top three, top five all the time. I was four for the green jersey, but I actually recognised, okay, you're not going to win a stage here. It's like it could happen once but you're just going to waste your life or like your pro career and it's better to be one of the best lead-outs man or to work for one of the best sprint or the, for the best sprinter in the world and yeah it just makes it makes it easier for you training and keep training keep fighting because you know you know why you do it and it's like every rider has to make this decision you always can dream about to win a stage i'll never give it up that dream but at the same time i know if i get there in best shape the chance that he's going to win is like nearly 100 percent well, that's it, isn't it? You guys have to work so hard during the stage. But with someone like Mark Cavendish at the end of the lead-out train, I guess you, you're pretty confident that all the work, hard work you're going to put in is going to result in a victory. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, he's, he's the quickest guy out there. Um, with the best team, he wins the, the most races. It's, it's pretty plain and simple, but, you know, that comes back to the makeup. You know, Cav's one of the fastest guys. Uh, he's got something physically superior to, to anyone else in the bunch, and that's what makes him good. And, Sure, we all train, we all prepare ourselves the best we can, but uh, at the end of the day, he's got something, DNA, makeup, and that's what makes him the best. What about if you were to change teams and go somewhere else and then you became the number one sprinter for that particular team? You know, Would the inside knowledge that you've got of these guys and the lead-out train really give you an advantage over someone like Mark, or is he just so fast at the moment? Uh, no, I've said before, he's beatable. I know how you could beat him, but... If, uh, if it wasn't me leading out Mark Cavendish, it would be someone else. And there's guys that are just as good as me, but I think one in every ten victories I could probably get one over him just by you know, outfoxing him. But uh, at the end of the day, he's, just, he's quicker than most guys out there. Well, if that one out of every ten was perhaps the Champs-Élysées stage of the Tour de France, they'd be OK? I'd be happy with one win every ten races, <laughs> that'd be sure. <laughs> Oh, you guys do a fantastic job. We see the results, not just Mark being so fast, but you guys actually doing an incredible job out on the road. Good luck. Another job here today to, to be done for Matt Goss, not Mark Cavendish this time around, but he's trying to try and win the Tour Down Under. Yeah, it's an, going to be a hard day. Uh, certainly, we'll try and get Gossy up for the victory, either with uh, one of the bonus sprints or the, the overall for the stage. Uh, it's going to be hard, but we've got a good team and I think we've got experience. OK, Matt Goss. So narrowly missing the overall lead there, two seconds off at the end. But there was two intermediate sprints. You picked up two second bonus in the first one, but then there was a big stuff up in that second one. Can you explain what happened there? Yeah, well, to be honest, we weren't even going to go for the second sprint. Or we were going to try and get the first or second in the stage at the finish. But uh, Rubberbank seemed to want it back for the for the bonus sprint. And then uh, coming through the last corner, there was four or five Rubberbank guys in the front. But someone there in the middle, I don't know who it was, let let the wheel go and uh, sat up and let the three guys in front go away and. Uh, you know, uh, didn't get any seconds there in that sprint, but, you know, that's, that's the way it goes sometimes. Well, I guess it came down to the final sprint then. You still could have won the race if you did win, win the, the stage or run second. Didn't quite have the legs in the end, though. 
No, you know, third. My worst position I think I could have finished today. But, uh, um, yeah, I, I did. I tried. Uh, I, sh I could have followed Renshaw on the barrier, but uh, I was a bit hesitant after yesterday where I got boxed on the barrier and uh, cost myself a few seconds there. So I tried to just go up the, w the side with the wind. And uh, in the end, that cost me. I didn't quite get past uh, Henderson on the line. Well, I guess, look, taking no uh, credit away from Cameron Meyer, he really put himself in the box seat by going in the breakaway a couple of days ago and then holding on to the line with a gap to the bunch. A little bit of a tactical error on that day, perhaps cost you the race overall? Yeah, you know, uh, you can look back at a few different things across the week that's happened, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm still happy with the, the second result. I would, I would have rather have won, that's for sure, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll come back next year and try and do it then.